What's up, everybody? Brandon here with uh, my friend and yours, Mr. Tom Marks. Hello. Hey, Tom. So let's talk about Battlefront 2. <laughs> All right. We've been playing a whole lot of multiplayer, haven't we? Yeah, and not always in uh, in the happiest of moods, I yeah. don't think. Uh, the game is great. The progression system is one of the worst I've ever seen. It's definitely the worst I've ever played in a multiplayer game. Um, and a lot of people have been accusing it of being pay to win, which we thought, yeah, there might be some validity to that. So we wanted to put it to the test and show you exactly what we got by trying to pay to win. We spent 100 real American dollars and got uh, basically enough crystals, 12,000 crystals, to purchase 60 trooper crates, which is sort of the most usable crate type that there is. Yeah. Um, and the breakdown was... Uh, <laughs> It was rough. <laughs> it, that, that's putting it lightly, I think. Yeah. It really didn't feel like it was worth it at all. Yeah, so we paid. We did not win. In fact, we felt like it was a waste, and here's why. First of all, uh, we're going to go through this quick because it's a lot of math, and we wanted to break <laughs> down and show you exactly the numbers that we got. Um, first of all, you're not guaranteed a set amount of items, right? Uh, each crates came with either four or five items. Um, it, we got about 45 to 55% in favor of five items over four, but I feel like a long enough timeline that evens out to 50-50. Yeah, I bet so. And it just seemed like a weird like thing to have to even keep track of. Like right. I don't understand that. <laughs> uh, okay, so breaking it out of that, uh, we everything that comes in a loot crate, we broke into two subset groups, right? You get star cards, which are the actual tangible things you use in multiplayer. They power your characters and abilities and heroes and ships. Uh, and then everything else, which are cosmetics, victory uh, poses, taunts. Uh, and then bundles of crafting items, which you use to upgrade cards, and then credits. Sometimes you just get in-game currency back, although we didn't find too many instances of that. Um, Tom, why don't you go and break down what exactly we got in the card section? Yeah, so in, in the 60 crates that we opened, we got 209 cards. Uh, there are four rarity levels of cards, but you can't get the highest in a crate. Uh, we got 152 white cards, which are the base lowest one. So that's 72% of the cards we got were the most common possible card, the cheapest to craft. Right. Uh, then we got 35 green, which is the next level up. We found that we got 19 cosmetic items and only three blue in 60 crates which is about the same rarity as a Hearthstone Legendary, and it just seemed... About 1 in 20? Yeah, 1 in 20 crates you get a blue, and it just seemed just incredibly punishing that that was how low, or how few we got, especially considering that there is the purple level above that that yeah. you're going to have to craft those into. Yeah, so about 72% were white, 15, 16% were green, and about 1.4% were blue. Uh, which is not looking good if you're looking for you know the high the high rare stuff. Everybody knows that opening a loot box is that anticipation of seeing that you know that high level card come out, and unfortunately that's just too f few and far between with uh, with Battlefront. Um, the other breakdown that we did was everything that isn't a star card, everything that you can't use in multiplayer uh, that affects your characters. So crafting and credits. Yeah. The crafting components, obviously, we got crafting parts in every crate, uh, but it varied between 45 crafting parts and 60 crafting parts, which was another kind of 55 to 45 split uh, in favor of 45 crafting parts in this time, but I think it must have probably been another 50-50 on a yeah. long enough timeline. Uh, and then, like you said, we got five instances where we got a little package of 50 credits, which is such a slap in the face when you pay <laughs> 4,000 credits for a crate. Um, yeah, and obviously crafting items being what the end game progression is going to rely on to upgrade your cards. Those are important, but again, I don't understand the distinction between two different um, uh, denominations, 45 or 60. Yeah. Um, the real part uh, that really kind of burns in opening loot crates is that they become less valuable the more you open and the farther you progress in the game because you get duplicates. And that's mostly because duplicates only return credits. They don't return crafting items, again, which you need to progress later on in the game. So of the 60 crates we opened, starting with a near new account, we ended up getting 50 white duplicates across those 209 cards and six green duplicates. And a white duplicate, again, returns 200, a green returns 400. And I mean, if you're opening a trooper crate that you're spending 4,000 credits on, losing a slot to a duplicate only to get 400 credits back, one-tenth of the cost of that crate, is insanity. Yeah, it's it's really, really bad. Like it, Because there's a scenario where you open uh, a crate and you get three white duplicate cards and basically you just spent 3,400 credits to get crafting parts and nothing else. Right. So the value of crates, as you said, goes down over time, but crafting parts never get easier to acquire. Right. And it just, it, it's this self-defeating process that I, I really don't understand uh, why it would be this punishing. 
yeah, I totally agree with you. Uh, outside of that, um, I mean, totally, uh, once all was said and done, we opened 60, 60 crates. Um, we ended up netting about 15,800 credits based on the return we got from duplicates and those five small uh, credit bundles that we saw over the 60 crates. And then we ended up netting about 3,000 crafting materials as well, um, you know, from the guaranteed crafting bundles that we got in each crate, which the uh, tail of the tape is, it's not worth it. Yeah, it's really not. Like, to put that in perspective, uh, a third of the white cards we opened were duplicates, yeah. but the money refund, or the credit refund that we got from opening those duplicates was only enough to almost buy us four crates. Yeah. So that's that's crazy. Like, that is a really, really bad payoff there. Yeah. The crafting parts, having 3,000 crafting parts is... Uh, very helpful in kind of building up a, an early collection, but even then, I, I think 3,000 crafting parts would only let you get about seven or eight uh, third level cards to fourth level. Right. And seven or eight is like, you know, that's enough to, to max out almost three classes or yeah. almost three heroes. It's really, really uh, punishing yeah. in how and much I mean, we got. 3,000 crafting materials is enough to take a white card to a purple card three times, four uh, times? Four times, yeah. Which is insane. So there you go. There you have it. You saw our numbers. You saw our breakdown. Um, really hope this video helps inform you about your purchasing decisions, whether or not you're going to buy uh, you know, that premium currency to unlock more loot crates or just grind it out um, if you keep playing Star Wars Battlefront 2. Tom, I don't know if you enjoyed opening these loot crates. I did not personally. No, I didn't have much fun. <laughs> we opened 60 boxes. Opening a loot crate is supposed to be fun. Um, it's supposed to be like a little present and a reward, but it just sort of felt like an underwhelming experience. Yeah, especially with the uh, the server error messages popping up when we were opening them as well. Oh, well, that's a whole other issue. <laughs> uh, but there you go. That's the tale of the tape. We tried to pay to win, and we paid and lost. But for much more on Battlefront 2, as it evolves and as we continue to play it, and for uh, Tom's final review of the game, which might be already be live by the time you're watching this, uh, just for all of that, and Star Wars, and video games, and everything else, Keep it right here on IGN.